Good morning, this is Bob from Bob's EV Garage and today on my bench we're going to be custom making a lithium ion 14.8 volt 2200 milliamp hour vacuum battery. To get started, let's take it apart. The original shrink wrap is pretty brittle so we can just peel it away. It should just come off. And that leaves us with the exposed cells. We can see that the original ones are a Chinese brand, FTD 2200 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. So you can tell they're Chinese because they don't actually have a part number. It's just kind of their rating on there. We also have the BMS. We'll be keeping this. So we'll make sure to not damage this in the process of taking the battery apart. I'm going to remove the BMS and to do so I've got a nice big soldering iron that I'm going to plug in and heat up. We'll be back in five minutes. Okie dokie, so the iron's been heating up for a couple minutes. So just a little tip, if you get some solder, place it on the end of the iron. When it starts melting you know the iron's hot enough. Easy. Another thing, make sure you have a wet sponge. You've got to clean the end of the iron because it oxidizes really quickly because it's hot. Clean it. We're going to start working on the BMS now. To get started, I'm going to go through, disconnect the main power wires. There we go. So our main power connections are off. Next, we're going to remove the cell taps, which allows the BMS to monitor the individual cell voltages. Okay, before I go for the wiring, I'm just going to peel off the paper. That was never going to work right, but I've got to take this off because you can see there are some wires going to the opposite ends of the cells, and we need access to that. I would have rather kept this intact, but... That's how it goes. Sometimes often the adhesive is actually stronger than the material itself. So there we go, fill it off. And now we can actually get at the at the balance wires. So we'll just disconnect them from the top. Okay. Excuse me if my arm is in the way. I'll do my best not to. As you notice I've got three hands now, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Now we've got to do the slightly harder ones. You can see that some of these are just using uh, nickel and they're connected straight to the cell. So this will be a little bit harder to remove. I'm gonna use a screwdriver. Easy, we've got our BMS now and we can start working on the rest of the battery. Okay, so right now we're just testing the cells. So, yeah, using the meter, we're looking at about 3.52. So the reason we're doing this is because I had a look at this BMS circuit here, and it doesn't obviously have any balancing feature, which means that if I build the pack with cells that are unbalanced, they will stay unbalanced, so their voltages will be different. And during charging, that causes problems because a cell could be overcharged, and that results in a fire. So we make sure the cells are balanced beforehand and we minimize the risk of issues. Let's have a quick look at the construction of this battery. So we've got our positive and negative terminal. Following from the positive, we move around the back. Negative of the top cell connected to the positive of the second cell, which brings us around to this tap, moving around and around so that they're all linked in series, creating the 14.8 volts and their capacity stays the same, so the overall capacity is still 2200 milliamp hours, you just increase the voltage. We're gonna mod we're gonna, not modify, we're gonna use the same setup in our new battery, so we just gotta have a look at this to make sure we know how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arrange our new cells, which by the way are Samsung INR25, oh, INR186050 25R cells, so these are power cells made by Samsung, these are actually slightly higher in capacity, so they're 2500 milliamp hours versus 2200, like the old battery. So this will be an upgrade overall. They're just good cells. Okay, 
So it's really hard to wrap four cells at a time with tape. So I'm going to do two at a time and then wrap the sets of two together. So what we do, start on one cell. packs now and we'll take these together. Okay, note the orientation of how I've got them. Battery plus has to match up with the battery plus terminal there so the BMS can sit like that. What I'm going to do with the silicone tape Batteries all together now. Uh, don't mind the crappy wrapping style. We'll actually put some good heat shrink on here so it'll look professional. Um, what's next? Okay, we're gonna do our uh, spot welding. So we're gonna have to cut the nickel strips first, make sure that they're in the right orientation, and we can go from there. Okay, so we've got our roll of nickel strip here. I'm just gonna make sure there's no tape or anything on it because that'll mess with our spot welding. A pair of scissors works really well to cut nickel strip, by the way. Um, handy tip. What I'm going to do is just copy the, the instructions, pretty much, on the original battery. Cut the nickel strips to size. And, yeah. I'll fast forward and we'll get back when, when it's ready. We're going to bring the spot welder into view now. This is a homemade spot welder. I put this together myself. If you want a video specifically about it, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to make one because it was a pretty cool build. But it's pretty easy. You just plug it in. There's a foot pedal that I use to engage it. Notice the lights flicker every time I do it. Maybe you can't see that. They do though. Um, and we've got our welding terminals here. So they're just, they're just copper copper wire and it's good to, good to sharpen them before use, but it's not essential. This is how I'm gonna start. This is my battery positive, battery negative. I'm gonna start by attaching the BMS. Nickel strips. Show you that. That's spot welded. Looks pretty good. Good connection there as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the bridge between these two. Okay. Same technique. And a little bit of a spark. Now, a good practice is to put a little bit of an insulator between the nickel strip and this part of the battery because there's pretty much just a piece of plastic between the positive terminal and the negative body of the battery. So, good to put a piece of paper or something there. I'm going to see. Yeah, I might try and find a piece of paper we can put in there just to protect it a bit better. Okay, so I've got, I've got just some old paper here. It's like, it, I think it's called fish paper. You can buy it online. I might put a link in the description. You only need a little bit. It's just to protect the side of the battery where the nickel strip bridges. Hold it over. Perfect. And same welding technique as always. Quick spark. Lovely. Now we move on to the other side of the battery. We're going to spot weld now, using the same technique as always, applying a little bit of pressure and boom. awesome. Now, the reason I'm applying pressure is because at a small scale, the metal deforms 
and it actually presses better against the battery. And what that means is you get a better contact. So you get more current flow. The current is actually what's doing the welding right now. It just melts the metal onto the battery. And by pressing down, you get a better contact patch and more current flow. Our welding's done. Let's get on to attaching the wiring for the BMS. So if we look, this wire here goes from our negative terminal to the positive of the most negative battery, which means that this wire has to connect to battery one, B1 on the BMS. If I can focus, come on. No, it's not keen on focusing, but just trust me, that says B1 and that's where the wire's got to go to, this wire here. So this is our B1 wire. You notice I've stolen a little bit of the nickel strip off the bottom there. And that just makes it easier for us when we're doing our soldering or our spot welding. We don't have to add extra nickel of our own. So on we go. It's good to make sure the material is relatively flat before you try and spot weld it. That just gives you a better contact. This one could be a pretty big spark actually. Quite a bit of heat there, unavoidable though. So bend it over, and there we go. That's our first wire done. I'm gonna take this opportunity and just tape it in place so that we don't have to worry about it coming loose. Because while spot welds are metal on metal, so they're pretty strong, they aren't the strongest structural connection ever. So if this wire were to be yanked or something, it might come off. Also, because this wire is now referenced with voltage to these two terminals, you want to be careful. You don't want it to short out on either of these terminals, so bend it away for the moment. We've got our second set of wire, and we're going to attach that also to the negative terminal on the other side of the battery. So again, very, very simple technique. Press down with one welding terminal. Well, just need to get the other in place. There we go. That's more like it. Got our weld there. Yeah, there was probably something, maybe a piece of plastic or something on the surface of that metal that was just preventing the, the current from flowing. Looks fine now though, so we're all good. Same technique for wrapping, just make sure that this doesn't come off. A little piece of tape. Can't hurt, it takes 10 seconds to do this, but could save you from damaging your batteries potentially or you know having to do another uh, spot welding job, so that's all good. Remember, these wires have voltage on them now, and these batteries will easily dump 20, maybe even 50 amps when they're short circuited, which will produce a lot of heat. It's time to prepare the BMS. Oopsie, I did a stupid. I've got to add one of these lengths of nickel here so that this tap can connect to the BMS. So what I'm gonna do, not tap that's talking about transformers, it's, a, it's just a series connection. And all set. And that'll just fold up and over so it can connect to the BMS. So heavy focus on insulation because these batteries, uh, they mean business. So make sure that you've covered everything as, as much as you can. Tape will help a lot of situations, especially some good quality silicon tape. I really like this stuff. You know what's even better though? Capped on tape. It's a transparent or translucent orange tape that's designed for high temperature applications. Very good. I wish I had some right now because that would really help. But making, making do with what I got and this stuff isn't too bad. So As long as you press it on well the first time, it'll stick. If you leave it out, it collects dust though and then it does nothing to stick. So there we go. Our battery <laughs> looks like a little android guy. 
Um, <laughs> and we're ready to put the BMS on. Let's do it. So, good news and bad news. The robot still looks cool. I put these wires in the wrong orientation for the BMS because you'll notice when it's attached like this, this terminal is actually meant to go to here and this wire is meant to go to here and this wire is meant to go all the way over here. So I've screwed that up. <laughs> so let's see what I can do to fix that. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna create an extension for both of those terminals. Um, yeah, honestly, kind of screwed that up, but hopefully we can recover using some nickel strip. So we'll just cut that in half. And I'll do a bit of a montage of putting this all together. Hello buddy, you haven't like saying hi there. Uh, we're gonna have to cover this over because that poses a potential short circuit hazard. So we're gonna do a vertical wrap now. So it'll be much thinner, but it'll cover the battery in the other direction so that we get a more, a more secure covering. Now let's just make sure we've got some bolts coming out of this. Some angry pixies as Abe says yes 14 volts awesome and when this is charged okay you probably couldn't even see that 14 volts yeah when it's charged that should go up to the 14.8 or whatever and we're all set okay uh thanks for watching um bless you guys take it easy <laughs>